Hey guys, what we're going to talk about today is the pathway for hunger to make you successful in life in business. And there's many kinds of hunger. Let's talk about the thirst. Now, what is the thirst? You were an athlete, a rapper, maybe a movie star. You got exposed to certain things. And then your career fell off. And you got exposed to this thing that created the thirst. And this is one of the things that you will find a formerly famous person, uh, maybe a C-grade actor, maybe a B-grade actor who never really could get over the top and they will get default to criminal enterprises to keep their hopes alive. That's a really bad hunger because tonight we have the NFL draft and tonight starts the process where we're gonna have like 246 kids who are playing college ball are going to be in the NFL this NFL season and to go from being in college and I think it's getting easier especially for the athletes who have signed the name image and likeness deals and they're making seven figures or more that gave them the ability to recognize the money that they were having and it's going to in my opinion set up a lot of guys when they get to the pros because they're already going to be millionaires and once again, to go from being a regular person to being thrust into the starlight, being thrust into a position where you're making a lot of money, you're doing a lot of stuff, this is something that can create the thirst. And the thirst, in my opinion, is one of the worst hungers to have because what it's going to do, it's going to put you in the position where you're going to be steadily looking at the things that you could do or you're going to be looking at what other people have versus looking at your own self once again the thirst it's absolute worst hunger to have because you've got elevated you got pushed into a lifestyle that you may not have the talent or abilities to maintain so let's talk about the hunger this natural want this natural desire to actually be better and this hunger I feel is the best hunger to have because you just want to be better and you're willing to put in the time effort and work to be better and once you have this hunger you come out of the phase of competing with people because when I come on the internet and I present my products and services I'm not competing with anyone. I don't look at what XYZ has done. And I'm going to explain to you why I don't look at what XYZ has done. I believe with this new internet, well, not the new, but with the internet, with the new technology that's coming, everyone is kind of like a monopoly. I am the only Glendon Cameron on the internet. I am the only one that's selling the things that I'm selling. So this, in many regards, makes me a monopoly. So my hunger is based on what I can do to make myself better, what I can do to make my products better, what I can do to serve my customers better. So that's where my hunger comes from. My hunger isn't looking at someone else or look, you know, I don't really, you know, look at other YouTubers because I don't know what pathway, I don't know what things they did. I have no clue to what some of these really successful YouTubers have done in terms of marketing themselves. And I read stories. You got some YouTubers out here spending like $100,000 to make a YouTube video, which is a heavy investment. And because of the way that their YouTube works, the way that their brand deals work, the way that their affiliates work, they have the money to do this. And that, that is just staggering that you've got someone who's going to spend $100,000. you got someone that's going to spend 
a million dollars to make a YouTube video. That is really head and shoulders above what the average person is thinking, what the average person can do, what the average person can be part of. So once again, I do not look at that because when I read these stories, I am like amazed that someone spent that kind of money to make a YouTube video, a hundred thousand, a million dollars. And it's a, to me, that's a totally different game than what I am doing. So my hunger is based upon the reality of the things that I can do, based upon the reality of the things that are available to me, based upon the reality of the things that are open to me, that I have access to, that I can build, that I can create, and I can facilitate in this YouTube space. Because one of the things that I don't want to do is put up a facade. And for many of you, the hungers are all over the place. Some of you have that thirst. Some of you have a natural organic hunger to get better, to do better, to create better outcomes, to create better systems, to create better processes. And some of you are just simply hungry. You, because this is one of the things, and this is something that I, I consistently see. There are many people who feel that going on the internet and creating internet content is the pathway to wealth because they see so many people. And here's the thing, and this is something you may have not heard. Only the top 10% of content creators are really making money. The top 10% of content creators make 90% of the money. Because you, you can look at, you, do you understand there's 30 million plus YouTube channels? And these are active YouTube channels and these active YouTube channels don't even get a thousand views per video. Just take a moment and look at your YouTube dashboard and see how many new subscriber, new YouTubers are out there putting up content, working hard. And they only have like maybe 2000 subscribers and they get 100 to 200, maybe 300 views per video. And they're working hard. They're doing all of the prescribed things. But this content game and creating content and putting out content is uh, a, you got to have a strategy. If you do not have a strategy, like when I created Savage Finance, I had a strategy. Uh, I wrote down 100 YouTube videos that I would make. I actually started that and Savage Finance went really well until I made this one critical mistake put up a video talking about how to get no business, how to get no credit check credit, which was through PayPal. And this literally, that video literally destroyed my channel. Cause see, here's the thing, this video, and I put up like maybe three videos dealing with credit around the same time and they just kind of took off. And if you know anything about YouTube, when your video, when your YouTube channel has a video that takes off, the YouTube algorithm is going to demand that you create more content in that same vein. And if you do not create more content in that same vein, your views are going to fall off. And that's what happened to my channel because uh, Savage Finance started off really, really good. I was getting 3,000, 5, 7, 10,000 views the first few months per video. It was doing really well until I made that one video that literally destroyed my channel. And, <clears throat> you know, cause essentially it changed the orientation of the channel. And it, it, then I had to go ahead and had to go out and find all of these credit type videos that didn't require a credit check for you to get credit. And I'll explain to you with PayPal, you can get a hundred thousand, you can get 200, you can get 300, you can get four, you can get a million dollars if your normal processing situation, and this is people using PayPal to check out of your website. If your normal processing activity is very high, 
you can easily get a hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollar loan from PayPal with no credit check. But the thing is, when I put that video up, and this this is the, one of the things that kind of destroyed the channel, where people were upset that you had to have a PayPal account, that you had to actually have process, and they were upset. And I was just sitting there like, oh my God. And I, I could just look back at that time and see when my channel really, really got messed up. And one of the things that I tell you this to share with you that when you're on that thirst, because I'm going to go ahead and give you a range. The thirst is the bad side of hungry and that natural organic hunger of wanting to be better, wanting to improve yourself is... Um, really good you know if it's like give you an example let's say you write books and you put out a book and your first year you do 20,000 sales of that book then next year you put out another book and your goal is to do 25,000 you did 20,000 the sales of the original book next year you do 45,000 maybe even 50,000 so what you have done is you have beat yourself and once you go ahead and create a framework where you're competing with you, it's like, okay, 2010, I did 50,000, 2011, I wanna do 65. If you're competing on that level, it's gonna be much better from a mental health standpoint because there, there are so many stories. And you may come across someone who's in chapter 50 and you're comparing your chapter number one with their chapter 50 and you're wondering what is going on? How come I'm not accelerating? How come I'm not making this money? But when you compete with yourself, when you look at like, this is what I did 2012, and this is what I'm gonna do in 2013, you, you can easily create a healthy, uh, more mentally stable pathway of success without injuring yourself because I think one of the worst things you can do is to look at what someone else is doing and not know the full contingency of what they're doing. You can, you're, you're here on the outside, you're looking, you see that they're doing really, really well at whatever they're doing, and you can only get an outside snapshot. You have no idea what's going on internally with that person. You have no idea what kind of connections, relations, you have no idea. Uh, there's one guy that I'm studying who's a really smart, crafty guy, and he's doing some very different things. And because he's doing some different things, he's doing some extremely brainy things. That's why I feel that he's successful and I'm doing more research because this is one of the things. If you're open to doing the deep level of research, the internet makes it really, really possible, which is kind of a danger of the internet because let's say you have an Etsy store. There are so many tools that can tell outsiders what your store is doing, how many sales you got, and you may have worked really hard on your Etsy store. Someone can come along and literally just copy what you're doing and they can start making money and they can start stealing, stealing sales away from your store. So the internet is really, really good from that perspective that there are so many tools, technology and things that you can analyze to get into someone else's space. And you can go ahead and do these things and get in this space and learn so much that you can literally destroy people's business because of technology. And that's one of the things. And this is why I feel that you need to be a creator you need to be working on building and creating stuff and looking at the internet the way that a child looks at things. Because there's this, um, there's this riddle, how do you put an elephant in a refrigerator? And there are many people who are really brainy, they're like, well, you cut the elephant in parts and stuff. And the child was like, you just open up the door and put the elephant in the, in the refrigerator. Because you got to look at the internet with childlike eyes to see the obvious, because when you get too brainy and too intellectual, you can miss a lot of stuff. You can miss many, many things that are um, happening. And one of the things that is going on is 
frameworks. If you start a YouTube channel, you start a TikTok channel, you start an Instagram page, you need some framework. And there's there's conversation, and it's a really deep conversation here on YouTube. Should you have a niche when you are starting your YouTube channel? And many people's like, no, just go ahead and put videos out there and see which videos do the well. And once those videos do well, that's your niche. Your niche will self-identify. And thinking about it, that makes sense. But at the end of the day, you're going to need a niche to be successful on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. You're gonna need something that you consistently talk about. You're gonna need something that you um, actually do on a consistent basis to draw a consistent and targeted audience. Because like, I can understand that. I can feel that when you first start, make videos and you know, first few months, just make various videos and see what works. That makes sense. But at some point, you're going to have to hone in on something because if you have a channel where every day you load up something different or your feelings, that's not going to work. It's just simply not going to work. But with this hunger, if you have this deep, natural hunger and you want to compete against yourself and you want to build yourself, because like once again, looking at other people can be inspiring and it also can be dangerous. And this is one of the reasons that I don't really look at other people. I don't look at other YouTubers. I don't pay attention to these folks because I don't really know the totality of their stories. There was a girl years ago and she had like 1.3 million subscribers and she used to just come on and make the simplest nonsensical videos. And I'm just sitting there like, what is it about this chick? that's giving her such a vibe and she's getting all these views. Then I found out that she was the girlfriend of an even more famous YouTuber. That was it. She was just his girlfriend. That was it. And once I was like, okay, we got to stop looking at other people because that's not something that you can duplicate. You cannot pair up and be in a relationship with a top 10 YouTuber then create your own YouTube channel and feed off that relationship. That's not something that you can duplicate. And that's one of the reasons, and this happened like maybe eight, nine years ago. And I was like, okay, I'm through looking at other people because there's no way that I can duplicate her pathway. There's no way, there's no way. And this, this, this is why I'm saying that looking at other people and it, it's just a bad thing to do. It's just a bad thing to do for yourself because you don't know what kind of hookup, what kind of system, what kind of assistance they had. But when you're doing the work, when you're working on your video, when you're doing the things you need to do, this gives you incredible opportunity. This gives you incredible power because once again, the internet gives you the power and the ability to have a monolith business, a monopoly. You're the only one that's putting out what you're putting out. There could be other people in the snitch who are putting out similar products, but they're not putting out the products that you're putting out. And that makes you a monopoly. And that's a really, really interesting place to be because I always say this, I left $10 million on the table with the storage auction book because when I was doing the storage auction book as my first pure digital business, I didn't understand the business. I have more understanding now of the business. And this is why I say I left $10 million on the table because there were so many things I could have did more. There were so many things I could have hooked up with. There were so many things that I just simply didn't do because I didn't know that they were on the table. And as I grow in this thing, and this, this, this is the whole path of being hungry and finding the right pathway for yourself and your business is to keep learning. And this is one of the things that I've not stopped doing. I keep learning, I keep looking, I keep listening, I keep learning. Because when you keep learning, you keep looking and listening, this reveals things to you that you normally would not see. This reveals things to you that you just have no clue 
are even on the table. And, you know, starting May, next Monday, we're going to start with a new book. Well, I'm going to start writing the book. We're going to start with a new blog and we're going to start with new training. So May is going to be a, it's a, I'm, I'm excited. I'm really, really excited. And it's going to be a very busy month and it's going to be a really creative month because one of the things that you have to understand is when you're doing these things and you're creating this situation, you're opening up the path for greater and deeper success that is built upon your natural orientation. Because once again, um, I don't look at other people. I don't look at other YouTubers. I don't look at TikTokers. I kind of stay in my own frame, which keeps me on point because when you can beat yourself, that's great. That's great. And when you can create a situation where you're feeding off an internal dialogue, an internal hunger, that's magnificent. And this is one of the things that the power that the internet gives you to set up, to build, to create, to phantom. And it's amazing what you can do with your own power. And by just being hungry and just wanting to get better and wanting to experience more and wanting to do more, this is your power. So it's the end of April. We're on the end of April. April ends Sunday and Monday starts May. So if you want to be part of the new training, go ahead and enroll in the money course. It's going to be in the first comment. It's going to be in the first link under the channel. Go ahead and enroll in that. And I'm going to give you some of the best training that I've ever put out in my life. And it's going to be eye opening. It's going to be dangerous because here's the thing. Why I'm giving the money management course away. I feel that everyone needs better money management habits. That's one of the reasons I'm giving that course away. And I could have sold that course but that course now has over a thousand students in less than four weeks so that's really substantial for me because there are people out there who are giving away free courses and they've been giving away free courses for years and they don't even have 200 students they don't even have 300 students so to have a thousand students tells me that i'm on the right pathway with this project and the other things that are going to come and the other things that we're going to build and other things that we're going to bring out. So go ahead, get in the money course, go below, get in that, because we've got a lot of things that are coming, a lot of things that we're going to be working on. So go ahead, check out this video. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments and be sure to subscribe and be sure to get the money course because my name is Glendon Cameron. I will see you in the next video.